Eddie Vacation with consultant human resource development and training specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative Bank Limited and Tillian Group Country Cold Store. Co-op Bank introduces e-payments, our new e-banking feature that allows you to make payments online hassle-free. Log in securely with biometric technology. Make recurring payments. It's easier with automated scheduling. Save time by paying your bills online. Transfer money to accounts at other local and regional banks. Send wire transfers on the go to anywhere in the world. Or send money to friends or family using buddy payment. E-payments, the swift, simple, and secure way of transferring money. Welcome home. I want the best for my family, so every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef in the country cold store have been there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold Cold store providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Believe it, our strength will stand by you. Protection from all devils, big and small. The assurance we give it's so clear to see. Peace of mind that's our service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Attention all forward-thinking companies. Sure, you can do with a continuous positive boost to your image and impact your bottom line. Hiring the right people with the right attitude and mindset is where to start. Even if you did not get it right through your current hiring methods, we can help develop the right mindset for your current employees. If you think training is expensive, try not training and you will experience a perpetual downward spiral in patronage on account of increased dissatisfied customers. Take things into your hands and engage the best at motivation and customer care training with a tried and tested track record. Visit www.efrederick.com now and learn how you can change the atmosphere in your business and improve the customer experience for everyone who does business with you. Spice Island Beach Resort and Belmont Estate are two such local entities of world renown that have benefited tremendously from ongoing customer care, social skills, and motivation training. Training changes everything for the better for any business and every team member. Enhance employee performance through increased awareness and passion for the job at hand. Greater potential in your workforce awaits you through engaged, high-energy training that works. Log on now, www.efrederick.com. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Eddie Vacation with consultant. Wonderful, wonderful folks, wonderful. And welcome to this oh boy. It's really a plum pleasing pleasure to be with you this evening, folks. You know, as per usual, tell a friend, come on, hit that share button, gather your household, and let's have some frank talk, but of course, with some history lessons also. Thank you for joining, so that as you continue 2023, that journey that you should be on, a positive journey, effortlessly wiser and more aware as to how, what, who, when, and where to avoid on your forward, onward, and upward travels. This is a 107th edition, independent live, that is, and our fifth for 2023. Goodly folks, remember, share the live. This one is going to be instructive because, you know, we do not have much, um, what you call, um, history, local history on offer. We just have little pockets of it because it shows you that we're really not independent. We're still doing British history and other history, and we are so full of history and nothing from us. But of course, our topic for today is trust yourself. 
and you will know how to live. But to trust yourself, you have to know yourself. Our topic today is taken from this, it's a quote from J J um, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. He was a poet, a playwright, a novelist, a scientist, a statesman, theater director, and of course, a critic of his time. You're talking about 1749 to 1832. What does this particular thought for today mean? Trust yourself and you will know how to live. Trust yourself. That is the crux of this particular quote. Of course, we trust ourselves, don't we? Or do we? How many of us have, at one point in time or another, chosen to imitate someone else? Instead of being ourselves, trusting ourselves. One of the times we did what our parents wanted us to do, rather than what we wanted to do. You know what caused that? We did not trust ourselves. I am sure we will end up in trouble because we'd be living out of the expectations constantly of others. That's a trap to avoid. When you dig past all the ways that you bury yourself, your needs, your wants, your desires, and you begin to listen to yourself, you begin to trust yourself. Once you can trust yourself, you can actually start to live your own life. And of course, for your own reasons. Too many of us behave like, you know, we do not trust ourselves as manifested in the way we behave as if we cannot do without all the associations we have forged with ourselves, whether real or in many cases, fake. That is what this quote is all about. As you become more familiar with yourself and you can trust yourself, your path will become more and more illumined and clear. Note that this will require absolute honesty with yourself or you will go off on an ego trip, a pleasure chase or a self-destructive crash as many so often end up. Why is being honest with yourself important? Folks, watch that. If you can't trust yourself to be honest with yourself about your dreams, your hopes, and your ambitions, you're in plenty of trouble. How are you going to chart a course to lasting satisfaction and the life you dream about if you don't have an accurate map? When you lie or mislead yourself regarding what you want in life, the map you draw for yourself, the map you get to... to to your dream destination must be flawed. Depending on the level and the type of deception, you could end up headed in the wrong direction. Do you want love or do you want just affection? Should it last a lifetime or just the next hour? Can you see how just those two answers draw a very different map to the dream life that you wish for? And the difference between them is the level of honesty and precision with which you answer yourself. Some of us will do well to start the process of not lying to ourselves by checking the idealism our social media presence tries to pass us off as. One of my big life lessons that I have learned over the years, it is okay to disappoint people. We are very wrong to have expectations outside of your desires for yourself. This is our one precious life. So we must live it in alignment with who we are and what we want for ourselves in this only life. The one to please is the person looking back in the mirror, you. I believe in the end, life will bring us more, you know, more heartache and tears if we abandon the one in the mirror. Too many of us exclude this. This is number one. This is the most important number one. Only one number one you should have. Look at here. You. I know that. But you know, my mother introduced me to that. As poor as she was, she imbued her children with that level of pride. You are number one. You are not inferior to anyone. We will never be everything others may wish us to be. 
What's most important is that you become the greatest version of you that you deeply desire to be. Private people who are imbued with substance, therefore know how to post on social media and still live a life that they don't really, you know, people don't know about. I am always delighted to keep scrolling when I see things on people's profiles that I have reason to believe are either exaggerations or just not in conformity with reality, whether self-posted or by even negative attackers of anyone. Keep scrolling. So where can I apply today's topic? Trust yourself and you will know how to live in my life. That's a question we should each ask ourselves. This makes a lot of sense. If you consider how often you second guess yourself. I am projecting here, of course. I don't know you or how often you really do it. But most of the people I know, they do. So I'll extrapolate and include you in the group. Uncertainty leads to hesitation and neither make for a very satisfying life. One thing people seem to need is some level of certainty. Even if it's not exactly in the correct direction, having a direction seems important to most people. So long as you are honest with yourself and you trust yourself to make the correct decisions, you can adjust your route as your life develops. You may find things don't work out as you expected and abandon a particular method for arriving at your dream destination. The location may not have changed. You may simply have decided the jungle was too dense and gone back to try the hilly route. As long as you are being honest with yourself and trusting yourself, you should eventually get to where you wish to be. I'm advising you to take a moment and consider what actions help you to feel happiness. What things that you give, that you give help you feel fulfilled, so to speak? What else can you think of that is pleasurable in the long run? Not just for a moment. What things can you change in your life to better live your life? What of the life you are presently living is something other than what leads you to the life you dream about? They may be dreams or ideals of someone else. Dreams from a long time ago. Or little white lies that you told yourself the last time you thought about where you were going with your life. What can you do to replace the old goals, the old paths or routes from here on to that dream life with goals and paths that are more useful to you? What changes will help you enjoy life more or help yourself as well as others? Now, when you can answer these questions honestly and trust yourself to take the right path and make the correct decisions, you will know how to live. It may take a couple of tries to get yourself on a better path towards a better future. But keep at it. Eventually, you will know how to live. Then and only then, you can think, you know, um, what should I say here? You'll be able to figure out everything that is completely and fully as humanly possible for you and your life. That's an exercise I leave to you. Dear listeners and viewers, I leave that exercise to you. We have to do some self-introspection to see if this life, this only life we have, is really worth spending on minding people business, making up things about people, imagining things about ourselves that are not true, exaggerating and putting them out there, forgetting that all the people that we grew up with are not dead. Instead, put the truth out. Live your truth. Let it all hang out. Who please, please, where please? Zafi them. Self-evolution, according to somebody here. As we ready ourselves, folks, to observe 49 years as a supposedly independent nation, a lot of people think the word nation means state, you know, and place. Nation is people. 
independent people. Could you imagine how further along and desirably at that we could have been as a people, as a nation, if we had allowed ourselves to be exposed to the substance that sophisticates us collectively? The most important thing we can do for ourselves, folks, in this here life is to educate ourselves. I'm certainly convinced that once we trust ourselves, we will surely know how to live. Remember, folks, come on, share the live, and let's get some business going here this evening because this is about you. We're celebrating, or supposed to be, we are observing, pulling the blind and looking at it. 49 years as an independent nation. And as I told you before, and I will say it again, most of the leaders from 1974 to now need to be taken out in the market, a public square, and flogged, especially the last one, in office for more than any other administration and left us a decimated country, a decimated nation, a lawless people. They should be flogged and flogged weekly, not just weekly, W-W-E-K-L-Y, and flogged W-E-A-K-L-Y. <laughs> Let's take a little break here. Eddie Vacation with Consultant Human Resource Development and Training Specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, Antillian Group, Country Cold Store. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Attention all forward-thinking companies. Sure, you can do with a continuous positive boost to your image and impact your bottom line. Hiring the right people with the right attitude and mindset is where to start. Even if you did not get it right through your current hiring methods, we can help develop the right mindset for your current employees. Mm -hmm. If you think training is expensive, try not training and you will experience a perpetual downward spiral in patronage on account of increased dissatisfied customers. Take things into your hands and engage the best at motivation and customer care training with a tried and tested track record. Visit www.efrederick.com now and learn how you can change the atmosphere in your business and improve the customer experience for everyone who does business with you. Spice Island Beach Resort and Belmont Estate are two such local entities of world renown that have benefited tremendously from ongoing customer care, social skills, and motivation training. Training changes everything for the better for any business and every team member. Enhance employee performance through increased awareness and passion for the job at hand. Greater potential in your workforce awaits you through engaged, high-energy training that works. Log on now, www.efrederick.com. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces, as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome back, folks. And let me just pay a little respect to all of you for joining this evening on One Platform Event. And um, Angel, uh, Keisha, and Michael, Yudin. Welcome. And then, of course, on the other platform, we have quite a few. Remember, I really and truly enjoy your comments because I, I go in deep immediately after and, of course, early Sunday morning to check them out and, and give you some measure of acknowledgement. You know, so we have um, Elisa, Kerian, Kathleen, Charmaine, Grashed. Never heard of that. Never. So I hope I pronounced it correctly. Alice, Agnes, Shirley Ann, Amanda, uh, who else do we have? Aldith, Peter, welcome, welcome, my friend. Marlene, um, Jerry, Jerry, blessings to you, my friend. Uh, Anne Marie, Anna, Anna, my dear, you're so faithful, blessings to you. Jennifer, Jennifer, two Jennifers. Uh, Jenny, 
this one didn't want to be another Jennifer, so she says Jenny. Sam, Antha, who else do we have here? David, we have Bree, Josie, Albert, uh, Joanne, Stefan, Naomi, Tubbs, Joan or Joanne, um, who else? Elvis, uh, Wendy, Ann, Mary, Aria, Eulin, Christy Bell. Welcome, my dear. Welcome. Lydia, I know you like the show. Oh, God, it's a bad show. Eh? What are you going to do? I'm wearing them because my dad just now. When I dead, you know, somebody going to have to wear them for me, so I may as well wear them. What do you think? You know, Sherry Ann, Kerry Ann, Dread. Welcome, my dear. Jackie, Marva, Rhonda, Hillary, Amy, Kimmy. Amy, Kimmy, or oh, forgive me because there's a bit of a tongue twister here. April, Alice, who else? Claudette, Wendy Ann, Roger, Donna, Princess, Gloria Jean, or Gloria Jean. Sawandi, blessings to you, my friend. Blessings. Mary, who else? Kelvin, Sweetie. Richard, Doreen, and Cynthia. And of course, I can't see the, the, the YouTube platform, for, but for all of you joining on YouTube platform, I want to welcome you. And let me just make this other announcement here again, which is important. If perchance anything should fail on Facebook, please switch over to YouTube because it's also live there. We have a Cherry Ann, we have a Michelle just joining. Who else, who else, who else? Yes. Uh, that's about it on the other platform. So, folks, we have a lot of turkeys to fry. In fact, tonight's uh, edition only has three segments, even though it's a special edition because it's Independence Weekend and um, quite a bit to share. Good. So a lot of us do not realize, you know, folks, that wherever there's a lack of self-trust, there will always be self-esteem issues. Raising your low self-esteem is important because this relates to how you feel about yourself. How you feel about yourself is reflected in your aura, your body language, your tone of voice, and even your actual words. Your demeanor in life, listen to this carefully, folks, is a reflection of your level of trust in yourself on display. We have to fix that. Many Grenadians have to fix that. Many of our people are full of confidence when it comes to championing negative displays and selling ourselves short. This is when an aware person can see through all the low self-esteem issues. We all have time when we lack confidence and do not feel good about ourselves. But when low self-esteem becomes a long-term problem, it can have a harmful effect on our mental health and our day-to-day -day lives. I have met several conscious people, folks, young people, who admit to having self-esteem issues and would love to fix them. I applaud such honest young people because the vast majority of their peers are oblivious to their lack in that important area. And they continue to go around in circles, guided by low opinions of themselves. What is self-esteem? Self-esteem simply, folks, is the opinion we have of ourselves. How we feel about ourselves. The vision we have of ourselves. When we have healthy self-esteem, we tend to feel positive about ourselves and about our life in general. Isn't that interesting? When we have healthy self-esteem, we tend to feel positive about ourselves and about our life. It takes us you know, or rather it makes us better able to deal with life's ups and its many downs. So we have to work on, number one, work on you. When our self-esteem is low, we tend to see ourselves and our life in a more negative and critical light. We also feel less able to take on the challenges that life throws at us. We see them as problems. Nagging problems. Folks, what causes low self-esteem? Low self-esteem often begins in childhood. 
It could have to do with how you were brought up. Our teachers, our friends, our siblings, our parents, and even the media send us positive and negative messages about ourselves. Add it to all these various media and social media. Is, is, added to all this media, sorry, is social media. Why? And boy, do we see the whole gamut on display. Low self-esteem. No self-esteem. High self-esteem. And fake portrayals. Wanting to pass themselves off as lacking in nothing. When in truth and in fact, the need to fake is the giveaway of the lack of self-trust and absolutely no self-esteem. For some reason, the message that you are not good enough is the one that stays with you. It is just so unfortunate that this message originates in many from within. Perhaps you found it difficult to live up to other people's expectations of you or to your own expectations. That is because you're not realistic. Stress and difficult life events, such as serious illness or the loss of a loved one, bereavement, can have a negative effect on one's self-esteem. Personality can also play a part. Some people are just more prone to negative thinking, while others set impossibly high standards for themselves. But how does low self-esteem affect each and every one of us? If you have low self-esteem or low confidence in yourself, you may hide yourself away from social situations, stop trying new things, and avoid things that you find challenging. It is also true that high self-esteem, supported by maturity and some level of self-actualization, can also cause withdrawal from social situations and the like. Now, folks, in the short term, avoiding challenging and difficult situations might make you feel safe. In the long term, though, this can backfire because it reinforces your underlying doubts and fears. It teaches you the unhelpful rule that the only way to cope is by avoiding things or even sticking to what and who you know that are great contributors to your own retrogression. Living with low self-esteem can harm your mental health and lead to problems such as depression and anxiety, folks. You may also develop unhelpful habits, such as smoking and drinking too, as a way of coping. Good, but these things damage you. Some people are good at masking their depression with conversations about drinking and smoking, only the best. I have to tell you about the, the brand name Scotch, the brand name Cigars, or they tell you the source of their weed because it has to be Labrador, not ordinary pot home. It has to be a certain degree, a certain level. <laughs> Lord help us, yes? How to have healthy self-esteem, self folks. To boost your self-esteem, you need to identify the negative beliefs that you have about yourself. And then you need to challenge them. You may tell yourself you're too stupid to apply for a new job, for example, or that nobody cares about you. But should you care that nobody cares about you? Do you care about you? Start to note these negative thoughts. Write them down on a piece of paper or better yet in a diary, a journal. Ask yourself when you first started to think these thoughts. Next, start to write some evidence that challenges these negative beliefs, such as, I'm really good at crossword puzzles. Or, my sister calls for a chat every week. Or, it is so good that some people reach out to me for my counsel, my advice. Write down other positive things about yourself, such as, I am thoughtful. I'm a great cook. Or, I am someone that others can trust. Or, I really know how to keep a clean and tidy home. Folks, if these things are true about yourself, latch on to them. Start remembering that you're good for something. 
and stop believing that you're good for nothing. Things on your list and add to that list regularly. Then put your list somewhere that you can see it. That way you can keep reminding yourself that absolutely nothing is wrong with you. You're absolutely okay. I want you, come on now, I want you to get some interaction here with you. It is time to write in the comment section. Come on. I am powerful beyond measure. Come on, folks. Work with me here. I am powerful beyond measure. Absolutely nothing is wrong with me. I am powerful beyond measure. Absolutely nothing is wrong with me. Come on, affirm that as regularly as you can. Come on, write it down. Let me see you affirming that here today. Love yourself, folks. The people outside there, forget them. Learn to love yourself first. And when you're well-practiced, then you're qualified to love outside of yourself. You see, you might have low confidence now because of what happened when you were growing up. But we can grow and and develop new ways of seeing ourselves at any age and at any stage. Here are some other simple techniques that may help you feel better about yourself. Recognize what you're good at. We're all good at something. Whether it's cooking, singing, doing puzzles, or being a friend. We also tend to enjoy doing the things that we're good at, which can help boost our mood. How about building positive relationships? Build positive relationships. If you find certain people tend to bring you down, make you feel tired and exhausted when you're in their company, make every attempt to spend less to no time with them. Don't care how long you know them. Maybe the reason why you, your progress has been stymied is because you're too close to them. <laughs> Think about it. And before you cut them off, tell them how you feel about their words or actions to you from time to time. It's time for you to get brave and own up and stop living as an extension of someone else. God put you here to live as you, and you should live as, as you completely. Try to build relationships with people who are positive and who appreciate you. People who make you feel good about yourself. Be kind to yourself. Being kind to yourself means being gentle to yourself at times when you feel like being self-critical. Put your negative thoughts about yourself and your circumstances on the shelf and savor the moment with showers of positive vibes. Think what you'd say to a friend in a similar situation. We often give far better advice to others than we do to ourselves. It is time to take some of those advice yourself. Learn to be assertive. Be assertive. Being assertive, folks, is about respecting other people's opinions and needs and expecting the same from them. One trick is to look at other people who act assertively and engage them with a view to copying what they do because it works. It's not about pretending you're someone that you're not. It's picking up hints and tips from people that you admire and letting the real you come out. You need to start saying no. People with low self-esteem often feel they have to say yes to other people, even when they do not really want to. This passive reaction to things in general adds to the pressure they feel privately. The risk is that you become overburdened, resentful, angry, and depressed. This state is called overload. For the most part, saying no does not upset relationships. It can be helpful to keep saying no, but in different ways, until they get the message. Remember, no is a two-letter word that 
give yourself a challenge, folks. We all feel nervous or afraid to do things at times. But people with healthy self-esteem do not let these feelings stop them trying new things and taking on challenges. Set yourself a goal, such as joining an exercise class or going to a social occasion. Achieving your goals will help you to increase your self-esteem and cause you to have a larger vision of your life. You know, because low self-esteem affects our nation en masse and is directly related to the lack of self-trust in our people who therefore feel they need to be suckered into the shenanigans of cons, you know, con man and con woman, as has been experienced firsthand from 1995 to 2022 for the most part. I firmly believe that the following are some useful tips for building trust in yourself, which can help all of us as a nation to avoid such pitfall in the future. Be yourself. Stop fearing how others will look at you or judge you. Hear me now, folks. To hell with them. To hell with how others feel about you and your authentic self. Set reasonable goals. Often we aim too high with our goals. Be kind to yourself. Build on your strengths because we all have. Truly spend time with yourself so that you don't have any time to feel lonely. Remember I always say, you cannot be lonely if you enjoy the company of the person you are alone with. Be decisive. Use yes and no to your benefit. Once you can trust yourself, folks, you can actually start to live your own life for your own reasons. As you become more familiar with yourself and you can trust yourself, your path will become more and more clear, more illumined. I thank God for all the good and faithful folks who impacted my life over the years. I also thank each of them for showing up and making an impact on me. I thank those who remained throughout the years in spite of me always being me, practical, frank, matter-of-factly, and never afraid to call a spade a spade. Trust me, the ones who are able to accept me just the way I am have proved to be the real ones. And hence my realization today that the same thing or things others may despise me for is or are the very same thing or things others love me for. And I'm still remaining my authentic self. So you see, trust yourself now and you will know how to live. Do like me, breathe after your own fashion, regardless of the opinions of others. And you will have a good life. Flawless. Eddie Vacation with consultant human resource development and training specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, and Tillian Group, Country Cold Store. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Attention all forward-thinking companies. Sure, you can do with a continuous positive boost to your image and impact your bottom line. Hiring the right people with the right attitude and mindset is where to start. Even if you did not get it right through your current hiring methods, we can help develop the right mindset for your current employees. If you think training is expensive, try not training and you will experience a perpetual downward spiral in patronage on account of increased dissatisfied customers. Take things into your hands and engage the best at motivation and customer care training with a tried and tested track record. Visit www.efrederick.com now and learn how you can change the atmosphere in your business and improve the customer experience for everyone who does business with you. 
Spice Island Beach Resort and Belmont Estate are two such local entities of world renown that have benefited tremendously from ongoing customer care, social skills, and motivation training. Training changes everything for the better for any business and every team member. Enhance employee performance through increased awareness and passion for the job at hand. Greater potential in your workforce awaits you through engaged, high-energy training that works. Log on now, www.efrederick.com. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver, 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 deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wunderbar. Wonderful. And this is the, the third and final segment, but it's going to be pretty extended simply because of its um, uh, subject area, its independence. And uh, too many of us don't know our history. That's why we keep running our mouths and, you know, just empty, vacuous all over the place, just talking nonsense because we don't have that, that um, much of a point of reference to know where we've come from and therefore to know where we are going. Uh, I see quite a few people commending this shirt. This shirt has to be a special shirt, boy. Well, well, well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If only we were a nation that could trust ourselves, we would not have allowed the poor, unsuitable elements our negligence made way for in our national leadership. No way. If only more of us as a people had developed our self-esteem to the point where our standards were higher than the bouncing low level it has been at for most of our life, as part of this so-called independent state, we would not be in the decimated position that we are in today as a civilization. The freedom achieved on June 23rd 2022 must not be taken lightly. We are now able to soar to higher heights on account of the awakening of our youthful population, and that must never be lost. We have to encourage our youth to want better for themselves as against resigning to the life sentence of being an $800 worthless Imani, and possibly graduating to a full-fledged debusher later on in life. We have to work towards stamping our poor and vulnerable in our midst by encouraging each and every one to trust themselves and thus expose them to positive self-esteem where people like the old nastiness could never fool them ever again. What a pity. We are staring down the barrel of 50 years, mostly wasted, because most of the people lacked the courage of their conviction to stand up to the inferior infidels that they kept causing to be elected time and time again. And in spite of no real progress collectively as a nation, they kept going back for third fourth and fifth helpings of that inferior pie, the poisonous pie. It is as a result of the failing of our education system that we are today faced with a youthful population that has absolutely no idea of our rich history. I cannot stress our topic for today enough. Folks, trust yourself and you will know how to live. Too few of us in Grenada trust ourselves and are knowing how to live. I tell people, there are many people who went around supporting that inferior crap that we just got rid of. And their standard of living and quality of life never lifted. I never supported it. And my standard of living and quality of life was never compromised. Hello? Hello? Did you benefit from what you supported? And the answer is no. But you're still drinking the green juice on your day. You're jamming like Bobot. Stupid, stupid. And your standard of living decimated. You're being branded poor and vulnerable. So much so they believe they love you. 
They repeated that lie for so long. They and all believe they love you. But they only love you to support the industry that they developed around the poor and vulnerable. Faith and all these convoluted agencies. Let me keep it moving. Let's now turn to some valuable history lessons on Grenada's movement toward independence. Let's take a look at pre-independence radicalism, 1970 to 1974, and the birth of a new hero. You know, between 1970 and 1974, the disillusionment of the enlightened was soon to be replaced by the sharp polarization between Gary and the people. As Grenada moved into its second revolutionary phase, the first, of course, being 1951, when the hero, Gary, stirred up the crowd against the plantocracy and the British colonial aristocracy. Gary was forced to acknowledge the threats to his power and influence because the methods employed by supporters of the Black Power Movement indicated a deliberate appeal to his own constituents, the agro-proletariat. The young elements made serious efforts to exploit the existence of general discontent in the society. The extent of the organizational potential and support was soon emphasized in a nurse's strike on November, December, 1970. In November, 1970, a group of about 30 nurses staged a demonstration through the streets of St. George's protesting poor working conditions, unhealthy facilities, and a shortage of medical supplies. But don't those things sound familiar? All of these being present under the recent past presided over by an administration that won three clean sweeps. And those maladies still exist today. The nurses back in 1970 soon attracted the support of secondary school students, some of whom supported the radical urban elements organized in groups like Fora. When a further massive demonstration took place on December 15th, the police arrested 30 people, charging them with conspiracy to riot and other similar offenses. The lack of essential drugs, dressings, and medical appliances provoked the nurses' demonstration. This was a statement of a policeman during the riot trial. The opposition accused the Gary government of callousness and gross indifference to the health of the nation. The medical service was said to be on the verge of ruin. And it still is today, 50 plus years on. In the February 1972 general elections, the Grenada United Labour Party, the GULP, under the leadership of Premier Regeri, scored a landslide victory, winning 13 of the 15 seats in the House of Representatives. The remaining two seats were won by Herbert Blairs and Wellington Friday of the Grenada National Party, GNP. You know, the major issue on the campaign of the GULP was independence for Grenada. And Gary claimed that his victory gave him a mandate to lead the people of Grenada into independence. Gary continued to be the hero. The arrests and trials during the nurses' crisis of December 1970 had the effect of dragging out the conflict and encouraging the various elements represented in the cross-section of the arrested people to further organize their anti-Gary activities. Being baffled by the outcome of the 1972 elections, Unison Whiteman, Selwyn Strong, Sebastian Thomas, and Teddy Victor returned to the grassroots together with about 20 sympathizers. They focused their attention on the Grenada United Labour Party's stronghold of St. David, whose parliamentary representative was Mrs. Cynthia Gary, wife of Eric Gary. Less than one month after that election, they formed a group called Joint Endeavor for Welfare, Education and Liberation. J-E-W-E-L, Jewel. 
The jewel's main aim was to undermine Gary's agro-proletariat base by exposing as much contradictions of Gary's personality, the gap between his words and his actions. To this end, the jewel's first major realized project was the publication of an information sheet simply called The Jewel. The first issue stated that it would be the voice of the cooperative movement soon to be launched in St. David, appealing to a population, 60% of whom were back then Roman Catholic. The news, she the news sheet skillfully used biblical references to bring out the message of unity. Later on in 1972, though, an Englishman named Lord Brunglow barred the public from gaining access to a popular beach through his property by fencing an access road through his Lassa Jess estate. The people's protest to the Gary government went unheeded, and so they turned to the jewel, which organized a people's trial. The peasants convicted Lord Brunglow in absentia for violating their rights, then tore down the fence and marched defiantly to the beach. Several months after the Lord Brownlow incident in March of 1973, on the initiative of Maurice Bishop of the Movement of the Assemblies of the People, MAP, MAP, and Unison Whiteman of Jewel, they held a joint convention and agreed to merge into one organization which they simply called the New Jewel Movement. <coughs> Excuse me. They became the main articulators for meaningful independence as against what they termed the meaningless independence that Gary was likely to bring to the people of Grenada, whereupon he would become the first prime minister, thus vested with even more powers than ever before. When the NGM in the lead, with the NGMs are in the lead, popular opposition to Gary began to gain momentum and take on a life of its own. While Gary and Herbert Blairs were in London holding independence talks with the British government, the NGM convened a People's Congress on independence of roughly 10,000 people <coughs> representing one quarter of the electorate. This was followed by another on November 4th, 1973 at which the people convicted Gary of 27 crimes involving corruption, incompetence, and brutality. The People's Congress called on Gary to resign within two weeks or face a general strike. These anti-Gary protests did not deter Gary one way or the other, as he proceeded to hold independence talks in Britain. In May of 1973, Eric Gary led, by, led a delegation to the Grenada Constitutional Conference held at Marlborough House in London. The government delegation included George F. Hostin, JPMP, Lauriston Wilson, CBE, Edwin Heiliger, QC, Nolan Jacobs, and DC Buxo. The opposition delegation was led by Herbert Blairs, JPMP, Senator Ben Jones, Jack Dare QC, and Mr. Bernard Cord. The UK's delegation was led by the Right Honorable Lord Balneal, MP. Gary had no intention of resigning despite all the upheavals in the state, but went on radio to deliver a scathing attack on his enemies in another threatening speech. On Sunday, November 18th, six leaders of the NGM, Maurice Bishop, Eunice Weidman, Selwyn Strawn, Hudson Austin, Kenrick Radix, and Simon Daniel went to Grenville to discuss the planned strike with business leaders. There, the six were assaulted by members of what was called Gary's Mongoose Gang and beaten horribly. They were thrown into jail, a jail cell and denied bail and medical attention. Bloody Sunday, as it was called, marked a turning point 
in the opposition to Gary because it drew together large portions of Grenadian society, including the middle class and what was left of the upper class. In a reaction of fear and disgust at the brutality which was Gary's response to the forceful opposition to his rule. You know, folks, with the NGM leadership in jail, the anti Gary elements of the bourgeoisie stepped forward and formed a coalition called the Committee of 22. Included were the Grenada Union of Teachers, Civil Service Association, now Public Workers Union, the Chamber of Commerce, the mostly anti Gary unions, the churches, and various other middle class groups like the Rotary Club. It is said that the established bourgeoisie opposed Gary because his patronage and corruption threatened their profits and because his repressiveness was jeopardizing Grenada's capitalist economy by provoking mass upheavals. While the Committee of 22 wanted reform, which would stabilize the society, they did not want any change in the capitalist system, which, as you know, socialism was proposed by the NGM. They didn't want that system at all. On November 19th, the Committee of 22 called an island-wide strike, demanding that Gary arrest and charge the police responsible for Bloody Sunday and that he move to dismantle his police state. Gary quickly agreed to these terms and the Committee of 22 called off their strike after one week. The agreement forced Gary to call a commission of inquiry to investigate the Bloody Sunday incident and the nature of law enforcement in Grenada. Headed by respectful Jamaican jurist Sir, he Sir Her Herbert Duffus, the commission delivered a stinging indictment of Gary's administration, describing Bloody Sunday as an unjustified act of police violence. Among other things, the Duffus Commission recommended that Gary disband the Mongols gang and reorganize the police force completely. Needless to say, Gary was bound by he was not bound by the recommendations at all. And he proceeded to appoint the police superintendent who was responsible for Bloody Sunday, Innocent Belmar, a member of government. Gary failed to comply with the other promises he made to the Committee of 22 on November in 1973. Both the committee and the leadership of the NGM called a more serious strike beginning the first day of January, first working day of January, 1974, paralyzing the island's economy. Simultaneously, mass protest demonstrations through the streets of St. George's became the order of the day until serious clashes with the police brought things to a head on January 21st, 1974. This climaxing protest or demonstration, Maurice Bishop's father, Rupert Bishop, was shot and killed. The conflict between Gary and the people, ably led by the leadership of the NGM, with a committee of 22 legitimizing the struggle, had reached boiling point. By this time, the NGM could be noticed in the forefront of the anti Gary, anti independence struggle. The GNB under Herbert Blairs was in the shadows doing what they thought was important. They launched a signature campaign against independence and was able to collect close to 19,000 signatures in support of the petition which simply stated, we strongly oppose independence for Grenada by itself alone. It proved easy for the NGM to assume leadership of the anti-Gary opposition since the GNP was weakly led and organized and could not cope adequately with a major new crisis which had emerged in the country. After all, historical records proved the inadequacy of the GNP to remove, let alone replace Gary at the polls, as by this time he had maneuvered the power he controlled to the fullest. 
As we come to a close here, folks, I want you to listen to this carefully. Independence, 7th February, 1974. Although the island-wide shutdown was still in progress, Independence Day, 7th February, 1974, came and went with the entire leadership of the MGM in prison. In a book, Grenada Revolution and Invasion by Payne, Sutton, and Thorndike, one onlooker recalled, albeit with the benefit of hindsight, shortly before midnight, we assembled on the battlements of Fort George, overlooking the harbor for the lowering of the Union Jack. On the roof before us stood an escort of British blue jackets. On our feet, quite literally, sat the opposition, safely locked in their cells following the afternoon roundup. Gary made a preposterous speech in which he declared, quote, we are now completely free, liberated, independent, in spite of a wicked, malicious, obstructive, destructive minority of noise-making self-publicists. God has heard our prayers. God has been merciful. God has triumphed, unquote. A British sailor sealed the occasion by blowing the last post before the Navy marched away to the Quayside. With huge sighs of relief, we, the British, <laughs> had knowingly delivered Grenada into the hands of a lunatic. And that, of course, is according to the book Grenada, Revolution and Invasion by Payne, Sutton, and Thorndike. Thus was born a new independent sovereign state, Grenada, comprising the islands of Grenada, Carriacou, and Petit Martinique. Almost 50 years on, and the real and genuine progress is scant, with three main achievements under Sir Eric Gary's 74 to 79 regime, St. George's University, and the beginning, of course, of universal education. While under the People's Revolutionary Government, Point Celine International Airport now, and rightfully so, the Maurice Bishop International Airport, the National Insurance Scheme, and the now almost decimated Marketing and National Importing Board. It is interesting that the administration that spent the most time in office in our post-independence history became known for corruption, bubble, vindictiveness, marginalization of decent citizens who could not bring themselves to support them and a totally decimated public service that needs serious reconstruction today, not to mention the promotion of lawlessness and a mangled civilization. This makes it absolutely necessary for everyone who is serious about salvaging some genuine pride and nationhood for Grenada to adopt and become a part of the new administration's transformation agenda as we attempt to move Grenada forward, onward, and upward. But I want you to listen to this just before we really take our leave here and go and enjoy our independence weekend. <laughs> Dr. John Henry Clark of the Movement for African Emancipation is on record as having said, we cannot ask the people who programmed us into oblivion to program us out of it. Education has but one honorable purpose, one alone. Everything else is nonsense. That is to train the student to be a respectful, and respectful handler of power. People do not train you on how to take that power away from them when they hold power by controlling you. To expect this of people is a contradiction in terms. Freedom is something you do not wish upon. You do not dream upon it. 
Freedom is something you take with your hands. When people dictate the content of your education, they are dictating what goes into your mind. When they dictate that, they will dictate your action. And though you might lie about it, so long as you are in this position, you are some form of a slave. Free yourself of it and do not expect others to do it for you. We need to stop begging at the door of people who reduced us to beggars. Dr. John Henry Clark. Folks, we all have a duty to make darn sure that the old nastiness and his brigands never ever see reins of leadership ever again. And they get crowned with the legacy of crooks and con men and con women. When you believe in yourself, you give yourself the power to succeed and live a life full of joy, purpose, and satisfaction, regardless of the reactions of others. Trust yourself, and you will know how to live. Isn't that beautiful, folks? Thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you, for joining. Thank you. Take this little bit of history. Share it with your children. Let them understand from whence we came to where we are. Being finally given an opportunity to sh shore up Grenada's independence. Nearly eight months on, after that massive change on June 23rd, 2022, we should not have any interest in going back to that old nastiness and his brigands because we now got a chance to bridge the gap. You remember? the most outstanding government or regime in our post-independence history has been the PRG. They came closest to meeting the needs, the developmental needs of our people. The rest, hogwash, hogwash, especially the one that lasted the longest. Best opportunity in the whole wide world to do the best for Grenada. But they hogged the opportunity for themselves. They did well on your backs. Never let that happen again, folks. Never let it happen again. I'm in. I'm out. I'm gone. See you next week, God willing. Regular programming. Until then, I beckon you. Stay safe. Stay well and remain totally lifted. Totally lifted, folks. Eddie Vacation with consultant human resource development and training specialist Eddie Frederick is powered by Grenada Cooperative, Bank Limited, and Tillian Group, Country Cold Store. Co-op Bank introduces e-payments, our new e-banking feature that allows you to make payments online hassle-free. Log in securely with biometric technology. Make recurring payments easier with automated scheduling. Save time by paying your bills online. Transfer money to accounts at other local and regional banks. Send wire transfers on the go to anywhere in the world. Or send money to friends or family using buddy payment. E-payments, the swift, simple, and secure way of transferring money. Welcome home. I want the best for my family, so every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, or chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for 40 years. The Country Coal Store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's our service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity.
opportunity. FG Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Attention all forward-thinking companies. Sure, you can do with a continuous positive boost to your image and impact your bottom line. Hiring the right people with the right attitude and mindset is where to start. Even if you did not get it right through your current hiring methods, we can help develop the right mindset for your current employees. If you think training is expensive, try not training and you will experience a perpetual downward spiral in patronage on account of increased dissatisfied customers. Take things into your hands and engage the best at motivation and customer care training with a tried and tested track record. Visit www.efrederick.com now and learn how you can change the atmosphere in your business and improve the customer experience for everyone who does business with you. Spice Island Beach Resort and Belmont Estate are two such local entities of world renown that have benefited tremendously from ongoing customer care, social skills, and motivation training. Training changes everything for the better for any business and every team member. Enhance employee performance through increased awareness and passion for the job at hand. Greater potential in your workforce awaits you through engaged, high-energy training that works. Log on now, www.efrederick.com. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Deliver, deliver, deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all.